Hi everybody, I'm Don Gillespie. Um, this summer I'll be working on porting both the Mobile Studio to Linux, so hopefully adding Linux support for it. Um, to start off, let's kind of go over what is the Mobile Studio. You know, a lot of people haven't used it or haven't seen it. Um, so in 2004, Professor Millard um, kind of had this grand vision for developing a a board that would be able to replicate all of the electronics lab equipment that you need for basically like circuits and EI and classes like that. And the ultimate goal was you was that you'd be able to do all of these experiments in your dorm room or in the union or somewhere other than in the lab. So he got together with analog devices and they were able to develop this, which is the RED2 I.O. board. It's the third revision of the hardware, and this is what I'm working on adding support for. Um, so this is a pinout of an older board, and the board has some really awesome features. It can do, it has two analog input streams, so you can end up having a dual channel oscilloscope. Um, it can do arbitrary waveform generation, so it's analog output streams, it has 16 digital I.O. pins, and it has a 4 volt power supply. So why is this important? Um, this is a screenshot of, or several screenshots of the software for Windows. And the first one shows the dual channel oscilloscope, so you're reading your input signals from the circuit. Um, the ones in the back are demonstrating some of the arbitrary waveform generation. And it's really awesome because before if you didn't finish what you were doing in the lab, as soon as your lab's over, they lock it up, you can't get back in. And the equipment's way too expensive to be able to buy it and do it on your own. Um, so it was originally developed as a teaching aid. Uh, Professor Millard kind of came to the conclusion that as students we have 10 minute attention spans, and anything past that, we're not going to pay attention. So, what he wanted to be able to do was be able to give a lecture for half an hour and then say, All right, pull out your board, we're going to build this, we're going to test it, and then go back to giving the lecture. And when you have you know, 100 people in a lecture hall, you can't have $10,000 of equipment at every single person's desk. Um, so, he wanted to be able to provide hands on experience outside the lab. Um, as I just said, it replicates about $10,000 worth of equipment, and it's only a $200 board. So that opens it up to things like like high school's electronics classes. Um, they can't buy that much equipment, but they can buy a $200 board, and they can do all the same stuff with it. You know, it's not as nice, but effectively, it'll get the job done. Um, it can also be used with LabVIEW to create custom controls projects. Um, actually, it can be bound to a couple languages. They have Python bindings for it, obviously C. Um, quick example of why the lab view is so cool. Uh, this is just a screenshot of my IED project from sophomore year, where we were trying to develop um, basically this, this thing to assist with workouts and keeping track of them. But ultimately, we could take your body temperature, we could monitor your heartbeat, like we could actually do EKGs with it. Um, we could measure your stride. And we hooked all this up through the mobile studio. So it was never really a, a success from IEDs perspective, but it was really cool that you could do all that with the mobile studio and just hook it up to LabVIEW and create your own software to run with it. Alright, so why should it run on Linux? Um, because Linux is awesome. I, I really prefer it as a development environment and in the embedded world, you do a lot of work in Linux, so you might as well be able to give people experience in the operating system they're going to be doing work on in industry. Um, so it has been going so far. Uh, someone, there are two people who actually started this project a few years ago, Ryan Molnar and Mike Kleiniger. <coughs> and the driver is a work in progress. They have stuff flushed out for the analog output and input stream, but they're not really working. Um, they did look into interfacing with LabVIEW. They did a really good job of figuring out what won't work and how they think it should be done. So 
it's really great to have something to build off of there. And hopefully, if I can just get it interfacing, I can just recompile a lot of the existing LabVIEW for Linux. Um, I don't expect that it'll entirely transition seamlessly, but a lot of the functionality should already be there. Um, any questions? Roughly the schedule. Um, schedule? Yeah. Um, so hopefully in the next month, finish the driver, and then by mid-July, have um, the lab view interface working. And then from there, it's recompiling and testing. So are there any major blocks or blocks the expect of the driver? Um, yeah, right now I'm at a little bit of a wall where it keeps returning uh, errors from the Linux input-output control for USB. And I'm not really sure why, so I'm, I've been doing a lot of reading about that. Uh, another possibility is joining some IRC channel from the, the USB, the, 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 the drivers, kernel drivers, device drivers, and so on. So they may be able to do it. So don't hesitate to join that. I can also, I try to send you a, uh, the email address of a person who knows uh, Linux the device drivers, we are past our past two, he knows that. Are there any other questions?